Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to compare sashimi X-wings and skyscrapers and learn how to decide which of these techniques to use in a particular position and why. These two patterns are closely related and can look very similar. In certain cases, you are forced to use the sashimi X-wing, but other times you will have a choice and whenever that happens, I will show you how to immediately know which one will give you a quicker and quite often a more productive result. Okay, let's go over to the puzzle board and get started. First, let's take a look at a skyscraper. A skyscraper is a three-link X-chain in the shape of an offset letter U facing either up, down, left, or right. The three links will lie in either two rows and a column, like this on candidate six, or they will lie in two columns and a row, like this on candidate two. The two yellow cells contain the endpoints. The two blue arrows are the strong links, and the green line is the connecting weak link. If you watched my tutorial number 16, you know that for skyscrapers, I deviate slightly from my usual coloring system. For these, I color the two endpoints yellow. I think it makes them easier to see this way, and you also know that I call the two strong links the spires, like two tall buildings, and I call the connecting weak link in between the foundation. The foundation can be a weak link, or it can be a strong link in the role of a weak link. But the spires must both be strong links. The inferences must alternate strong, weak, strong, regardless of which end you start on. The two endpoints will always be at the ends of the two spires, and they must always be in the same chute, but not in the same house. Because if they were in the same house and could therefore see each other, it would simply be an X-wing. In other words, if the yellow cell in row three was moved up to row two, you'd have an X-wing with the base sets in columns two and eight. So because of the way a skyscraper is constructed, we know that at least one of those endpoints must be true. It is an X-chain, which is an AIC type one. This means we can eliminate any same digit candidate that can see both ends of the chain. And here in this diagram, these three candidate twos would be false because they can see both endpoints, right? But now let's take a look at a sashimi X-wing. I hope you have all watched my tutorial number 11 on finned and sashimi X-wings. If you don't know how these work, then please go back and watch that video right now before proceeding here. Here is a sashimi X-wing on candidate five. The base sets are row one and row six. This is the sashimi cell, and we have two fins here in row one, column eight, and row one, column nine. Remember, the fins always must lie in one of the base sets. Now, there are two cases for the fins. Either one of them is true, or they are both false. They cannot both be true because they both lie within the same block. So if the fins are both false, that would leave a naked single in row one, column two, and this five would have to be true. That would force this five in row six, column two, to be false, leaving only one five left in row six over here in column seven, and so that would have to be true. So if this candidate five were true, that would mean these two candidate fives could be eliminated as false. And likewise, if either one of the fins were true, those same two red candidate fives would again have to be false because there can only be one five in that block. So the two red fives are false either way and can therefore be eliminated with confidence. Remember, with a finned or a sashimi fish pattern, you can only eliminate candidates that can see all the fins, which means they must lie in the same block with the fins which is indeed the case for those two red fives. But now let's take a look at what happens when we have a sashimi X-wing with only one fin. Here in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate one. The base sets are row two and row eight. This is the sashimi cell, and we have one fin here in row eight, column nine. So if the fin is true, that would make this candidate one false, right? And if the fin is false, that would leave a hidden single here in row eight, column five, which would negate this one up here in row two, column five, 
which would leave another hidden single in row two, column eight, which would also negate this red colored one down here. So this candidate one down in row nine, column eight would be false either way and can be eliminated with confidence. Okay, but wait a minute. There is another sashimi X-wing on candidate one happening at the same time. But this one has the sashimi cell and the fin in block three. So let's get rid of all these colors and start over. We have those same base sets in row two and row eight, but this time it's going to be these three cells and this is going to be our sashimi cell and this is going to be our fin. So now these two candidate ones would be false because of that fin. Without the fin, they would be false because that would be a hidden single here in row two, column five, negating this one down here in row eight, which would leave this as a hidden single in row eight, column nine, which would mean those two red colored ones would be false. And then if the fin were true, they would be false as well. So those two ones are false either way. So there are two sashimi X-wings occurring simultaneously. But now let's use a different perspective. In this exact same configuration, we have a skyscraper occurring at the same time. Those being the endpoints and these two cells being the foundation. And as you can see, we get the exact same candidate eliminations from that skyscraper as we did from the two sashimi X-wings. So what this proves is when you have only one fin on a sashimi X-wing, you are much better off to visualize this as a skyscraper because you get the same result in one move instead of having to do two separate sashimi X-wings. But there is one special case that I'd like to show you before we wrap this up. Now here on candidate three, let's look at row one and row four, and we've got these two cells as a base set, and this cell and this sashimi cell as the other base set with only one fin. Now the presence of that fin is going to negate this candidate three. So if we eliminate that, now we have a single up here in row one, column seven, which is going to eliminate these two candidate threes, okay? So now all of a sudden we've eliminated three candidate threes from a single sashimi X-wing. And that gives you the same eliminations that you would have gotten from the skyscraper. But the only reason that's possible is because of this three down here in block nine. Because if that was not there, you could possibly have two threes in these two cells, which would not make this three up here in row one, column seven, a single anymore. And you would not have been able to eliminate these two threes without the second sashimi X-wing. But in this case, the sashimi X-wing all by itself gets the three eliminations but normally the skyscraper is always going to be more productive and quicker. So let's take a look at the rule of thumb for all this, which has three parts. Whenever you notice a skyscraper, just go for it. And if you notice a sashimi X-wing with two fins, just go for that. But if you notice a sashimi X-wing with only one fin, then switch your perspective and find the skyscraper there will always be a skyscraper there for you. So when your sashimi X-wing has two fins, like you see here, you cannot treat it as a skyscraper, and you must just go ahead and treat it like a sashimi X-wing. All right, that's gonna do it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to click the red subscribe button and the thumbs up icon. And be sure to click on the little bell icon if you would like to be notified of any new video uploads. So happy solving, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Until then, be well and be happy.